This is an important public-private partnership. And I think as one looks at science and the development of new science, and, and especially AI and computing, you really need to have partners to make things work. It's too expensive for anybody to try and do it themselves. And I think uh, what the secretary has s arranged here is to create a partnership between our foundation, UCSF and UC Berkeley, with Lawrence Livermore, Lawrence Berkeley, and Argonne National Laboratories to work with the computing power that we have today, which is as much computing power in the last two years as we've had in the previous hundred and some odd years. And we're, and we're working with three uh, national labs to have new computers ready by 2022 that will be able to be 15 times faster than what we have today, which will really break the logjam, especially as it relates to neurodegenerative diseases. And with, uh, with everybody doing better with the cancer research and with cardiovascular research, people are going to live longer, and they're all going to get these neurodegenerative diseases, unfortunately, over time. And uh, what we're really working on is to prevent that, because it just would be too costly, not a very good thing. And, and, I, and again, really, as we compete with China in the world, we have to beat them in this field. Yeah, Secretary Perry, if you can hear us now, how do you think about how this partnership is going to work, how you're going to use the money, and, and why does it fall under the Department of Energy? Yeah, most people don't think about the Department of Energy and uh, medical science, but uh, we've been involved with this for some years now. Uh, particularly on brain science, and it's because of the supercomputing capacity that they have. Lawrence Livermore, for instance, uh, Oak Ridge National Lab, two of the fastest supercomputers in the world, and being able to take that data and get answers to questions that before you just did not have the uh, the broadband, uh, if you would, the the uh, the bandwidth, so to speak, to to get those answers. Today we're uh, approaching that. In the next 18 to 24 months, we're going to have exascale computers coming on board that are going to be anywhere between 50 and 100 times faster uh, than these computers that we see today. So uh, the improvement in health care, particularly in the brain science side, is going to be monumental. It's going to be, I think, really world-changing. And the Department of Energy is right at the forefront of it. And we have great thanks to uh, uh, the to Sandy and his family foundation for being a partner with this. And there's going to be other private sector folks as well that uh, philanthropically give to these types of public-private partnerships with the federal government. Mr. Weil, if I could ask you, you mentioned, and I think your exact words, we have to beat China on this. And I'd like to take the conversation there, if I may, if, you, if you'll uh, allow me to do that. Uh, and the trade war, which is currently underway between do the I U.S. Have a choice? and China. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Since you asked. <laughs> um, but I, I'd love for you to answer a question, though, for me on that, as to, as to how you see that uh, today. Presidents leaving the G7, uh, there are questions as to, you know, where we stand uh, with the Chinese and the trade war. How do you see it? What should, what should happen next? Well, I, I think it's very important for the United States and, and China to really figure out a way to get along with each other and partner with each other. I think that with the two countries, the United States and China, partnering uh, for the future, I think we would end up with a better world, a safer world. And uh, so I hope that the conversations uh, lead to uh, a relationship that is really very good and lasts a very long time. Do you agree with the way that the president has gone about it with the tariffs? Well, I don't really know about everything that he's done, but he certainly uh, keeps me on my toes. <laughs> All of us. Uh, Se uh, Secretary Perry, one thing that China has done is that it imposed additional tariffs at the end of last week, 5 and 10 percent, on U.S. exports that go into China, and that includes crude oil. And I'm wondering how you think about the impact of that. Well, I think it's really important for uh, us to, to take a step back and and look at the broad picture here. China has, um, I think, misused their position in the world for some period of time. The president of the United States, the first president, certainly in my lifetime that I recall, uh, that it's really stepped in, leaned into this and said, look, China, if you want to do business with us, if you want to be a good neighbor, if you want to be part of the uh, 
uh, the world uh, community, so to speak. Here are the rules that you need to play with. And we know that they've been stealing intellectual property for, for years and years. And no one's really stepped in and said, this has got to stop. And that's what you see President Trump doing. And my hat's off to him for uh, being a strong negotiator when it comes. Uh, the United States is the number one oil and gas producing country in the world. Thanks to innovation and technology, uh, we find ourselves leading the world in oil and gas production. So when you look at it from that position, China needs us a lot more than we need the Chinese. Now, I agree with Sandy when uh, the, if, if the solution is finding that middle ground, finding the way to get along, to live within the, uh, the rules of, of proper engagement, then hopefully we'll find that and the Chinese will come to the table and say, look, we want to do business with you. We want to be good neighbors. We want to be good partners. And that's a good solution. Do you think, Mr. Secretary, that we can get along with someone like uh, Iran? The president of the G7 suggested that he'd be willing to sit down with uh, Rouhani. Uh, I'm wondering if you um, agree that he should and, and how you think that that relationship moves forward. Well, certainly I think the president has taken a very strong stance against some of these deals that we went into uh, that were not in America's best interest. The Iran deal was one of those from uh, my perspective and a lot of folks, certainly from the president's as well. Uh, if the Iranians want to come in good faith and uh, uh, make sure that there's not going to be nuclear weapons that are uh, being developed there, that uh, they're going to be good citizens, that they're not going to be uh, purveyors of uh, terrorism around the world, then sure, sit down and talk to them. Uh, but their history has not been that. So, you know, this is one of those uh, show me moments. And uh, the Iranians have the uh, ability to do that. Certainly, I think the president would be uh, willing to... Uh, uh, sit down and listen to them. Well, actually, oil moved lower today in anticipation that if there is a meeting, Secretary Perry, then the U.S. would be more lenient when it comes to letting Iran export oil. How likely is that? How high is the bar well, for that kind of decision? Yeah, I, I, I don't think one day uh, movement in the oil market is going to have any impact on whether or not the president's going to be uh, still negotiating from a very strong position. You know, the market's going to go up and down. We get that. But don't ever forget, uh, we're in a vastly different position than we were five years ago and certainly 10 years ago from the standpoint of the production of oil and gas. America is number one. Mr. Weil, how would you, if you were, were still running a publicly traded company, how would you navigate the current environment? So many twists and turns and change of narratives and different headlines. What would you do? Well, I've always believed that uh, change is not something to be feared, but change is something which, which creates opportunities. And if I were running a company, I would look for ways in, in this kind of environment where we can better position ourselves for a time when things will be more stable. Does, does the stock market, how does it look to you in, in what is a fairly unstable environment? Well, I, you know, you're asking the wrong person because I'm always an optimist and uh, I've always felt that people don't like to follow pessimists. So uh, I continue to be an optimist. Mm -hmm. I wake up every morning that way and I don't always go to sleep as an optimist, but the next morning I'm optimistic again. It's a great country <laughs> So think long term. What's your level of optimism around the banks right now? I mean, they're, they're trading around a historical trough versus the S&P 500. Obviously, there's the rate outlook. But do you see value in the banks? I think the banks, I think the banks are very, very cheap. Do you still think they should be broken up? I do not. If, if, if we, I think that we're doing the right thing and making some of these regulations better and easier to, to uh, follow. It was costing all the banks uh, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars to be compliant with all these regulations that really didn't do very much. And I think the banks financially are in a very, very good position. And uh, I think they serve a very important function to our markets. Yeah. Mr. Wild, what, 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 what do you think the job uh, that Jay Powell has done, the Fed chair. How, how would you assess that? You know, I, I think that Jay Powell is a pretty smart guy, and uh, I think that he's pretty transparent, and uh, 
I think uh, I think he's competent. You think he should cut interest rates again? I think he should look at the numbers uh, at the end of September and make a decision. We appreciate both of your comments on a, on a wide range of issues, but especially on coming here to talk about your news about this new public-private partnership around AI.